So I uh, also want to introduce you to the audience. Yes, and uh, what I see here, they are mostly students in humanitarian fields. I understood. <laughs> yeah, in a uh, philosophy and uh, journalistics and uh, psychology. Yeah. Uh, well, they are a couple of our students in biology. But, and, uh, well, I would say that one, two, three, four, they are four biologists. So, uh, when you will tell complicated things, please consider that they are like. Okay, I guess I can start. Yeah, I think you can start. Yes. Thank you for introduction. Yes, it will be quite challenging for me to speak with people from social sciences because, because mostly I have uh, presented uh, presented to people such like me. I represent engineering, information technologies. However, I have a couple of slides also for social sciences as I'm working also in a our institute and it's very modern and important to make this interdisciplinary uh, research so I have some relate also to psychology uh, things so my name is Arnis Zirus it's how I pronounce it in Latvian so I'm from Latvian not exactly from capital city but uh, more or north from Riga closer to the Estonian border city called Valmiera, so our university is Vitima University of Applied Sciences and this is a place where I work and uh, now I'm working, I try to work in Illy State University because I like Georgia very much and I'm coming back here and for several times already. Uh, yes, uh, in our university we have Faculty of Engineering so these are things, most in all programs I have something to do, information technologies, mechatronics, it's where we bring together electronics with information technologies, good and houses and eco buildings, also very innovative program, which is important, very big export for Latvians is to Scandinavia, good and buildings, zero energy and uh, such type where we try to build these buildings together with sensors, with mechatronic students and with wise houses and uh, social technical systems modeling. This is social students and social sciences. Uh, this is master program uh, where we bring together engineering with uh, social sciences. So it is still I'm working in this field for about six years and it is still challenging me to accept other sciences and understand other people from other sciences and I feel sometimes that they have problems accept uh, what I'm doing, what, uh, what is my research and uh, so my aim is how, somehow to break these borders and try to be more open-minded to different uh, research uh, directions. <laughs> Yeah. Our institute, Social Systems Engineering Institute, uh, the name is very, yes, I like how it sounds, so social technical, which means together social and technical things. So this institute is not very big, we are about uh, 12 researchers now there, and, uh, but we have done uh, two very big projects, which, is, which were in uh, Framework 7, and uh, so in Latvia maybe there were some Four projects of 50% uh, came of, uh, to our institute. Uh, my education, so here you can see only information technologies, uh, bachelor degree, uh, master degree, and also my PhD uh, thesis uh, related to information technologies. Uh, I have and I'm still in also some professional things so if there are some computer guys which are interested in, in networking and then things like that so I I don't know why I'm doing this but I maybe I have some free time however I'm very occupied but uh, maybe I feel safer but uh, uh, 
till I'm still doing these professional things uh, for, for bachelor students where I can earn also money if I'm not <laughs> be a good researcher after some 10 years maybe. Uh, <coughs> So data security, protection, and, and, and uh, Linux operating systems, server administration, uh, computer networking, these are things which are not where, uh, where I'm doing my research, but these are professional, professional things. But research area is uh, virtual and augmented reality te technologies, and uh, I wanted to ask you how many of you have been to your game lab or fab lab? Raise your hands. Only one person, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> because you have also very, very good, uh, as other building at WAC, uh, very good uh, laboratories, interesting. Uh, and I, uh, I was surprised uh, that there will be such things, so these are quite uh, technologies which I'm uh, working in and if you, I just suggest you, this guy who's working there is very open and uh, just uh, if you, not for research reasons or some serious things, uh, you can just for entertainment and see how, what interesting things they are developing and doing, so these are, these are really good uh, technologies and so we have also similar similar technologies and uh, so yes and, uh, laboratory so research field mostly how I started I will soon uh, if you are uh, tell the difference about these terms which are on augmented reality so I mostly started uh, with uh, industrial training uh, uh, where these technologies are used, uh, participants recognition. What uh, participants recognition? What we try to achieve also for urban planning, for logistics, uh, different in different uh, uh, directions. Uh, uh, how these uh, technologies uh, are uh, are used. So main things. Uh, the difference. So I'm talking uh, about virtual reality, and usually we imagine this is uh, some. Uh, Virtual environment, computer-based environment, three-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional can be very interactive, <coughs> and mostly we imagine some. Yeah, it's something related to computer games, uh, entertainment, but it's completely not uh, only uh, related to games. However, game industry is also very big, big money, uh, but uh, these uh, technologies are used in uh, very different uh, areas uh, as well. And augmented reality is just a special, uh, special direction or kind of uh, virtual reality where we merge together real life with the virtual, uh, virtual life. So, and uh, maybe you have already imagined it. it's in different, uh, different uh, <coughs> expos and, and uh, uh, product presentations. Uh, augmented reality is used where you can. Just wear some augmented reality goggles, or using your tablet, computer, you see real life on on top of this uh, virtual life. So it's uh, <coughs> just uh, just one uh, one way how to uh, how this can be achieved, and the use of virtual reality, so and augmented reality. So as mentioned, industrial training, uh, architecture car industry, design, medicine, military, entertainment, tourism, uh, product presentation and art. So these are most like uh, such areas and uh, very interesting. Uh, it's also art. I didn't know, but uh, I met in one conference uh, which we were organizing in Latvia also from other university came an artist who is using the same uh, methods, the same uh, software. We developing a training environment for uh, glass fiber operators. He is using the same platform to make uh, temporary art. So it was for me uh, the first the first experience where I see that uh, also these technologies use only not engineering people uh, or IT people, but uh, different uh, different. <coughs> other peoples. So and why do we not need, for example, to use in uh, industrial training uh, 
So if you imagine uh, some factory where operators are needed to pre uh, prepare operators to work with some dangerous equipment, so we can't just give a book or, or show on the whiteboard how to do things, so it must be as real as possible, but you can't do it on real environment, so it means training without risk, uh, scenarios with expensive equipment, so if it's a, uh, uh, equipment is very expensive, you can't just uh, let him to try, or this uh, equipment is in a real production process. Uh, uh, transparent operations, it means you can uh, see these uh, scenarios, try different uh, things, and uh, you can also check uh, how this uh, action is done during training process so here I talk a lot about also this training process not only about visualization things on uh, what we work quite hard to make things more realistic and, and, and uh, closer to real life but important is also this intelligence of environment so if you build this 3D environment it must be also be intelligent so and, uh, human perception, human character is in different ways so to find different passes, to make different passes for uh, these scenarios for different uh, human types it's uh, other, other goal uh, what are we trying to uh, achieve and so, and yes uh, it's not very easy to prove but uh, so mostly our validation is based on uh, some uh, real-time approbations and uh, uh, interviews with experts so that uh, doing such uh, using such technologies we decrease uh, study time and uh, increase quality so <coughs> and maybe you have heard such terms as uh, game-based uh, game learning gamification, serious gaming so it's somehow there are this is related to this uh, entertainment from technological side point of view but uh, this used for uh, like serious needs for uh, educa education and uh, well, yes uh, quite quite many devices we, we mostly know computer mm, uh, keyboard mouse some joysticks but there are plenty of new is how we interact with uh, this computer or uh, with this virtual world. So, and uh, also a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> such input devices when we have gloves or just uh, motion capture things. So, and uh, you can construct this visual reality from very, very many uh, types of devices. And, uh, <coughs> Yes, uh, there are mentioned some criteria, uh, essential parameters uh, when you build such environment, whether it's uh, mobile or, or, or some uh, stationary uh, equipment. So one thing we did to also develop a, a <coughs> simulation model which predicts uh, the best this device is set. There will be some image later. Uh, to what you need to choose to build some of this uh, envir environment. So, immersion level: how uh, how deep are you in the? How deep you need to be in this uh, virtual world? Usage, comfort, uh, portability. If you need to travel from one thing, one place to another place, price group. Of, of course, this is also very important. If you because these devices aren't. Uh, <coughs> are not cheap but they are getting uh, cheaper and uh, so there are different uh, these criteria which you consider before you build also this uh, virtual environment so from point of this uh, physical physical structure so other thing is like this logical level where uh, uh, <coughs> the rules and, and, and uh, the scenarios compositions are uh, located and other thing is uh, what, what physical devices uh, will be used and also what software will be used. Uh, our partners and experience where I'm working and uh, somehow I have taken some experience uh, is very, we have had uh, 
project together with uh, Fraunhofer Institute in uh, Germany. In, it's in uh, Magdeburg city. They have a virtual reality training and development center where I studied and developed. Uh, develop. So we are using also their uh, platform to develop new uh, study environments. So they are they have developed for for ship industry for train managers different learning platform so uh, it's very very interesting uh, to get also their experience also from uh, La Laguna University in, in Spain and uh, good partner is also in Norway Agder University so these are universities which we cooperate and I hope that uh, as I have seen also your laboratories that we have when I made, let's say, our next projects and proposal, next call, I would like also your uh, Ilya University as partner because you have very, very good also this uh, technical equipment uh, to to do things uh, together. Okay, about Austrian platforms, I think it will not be so interesting uh, for you. It's more. Now technical and software, which I very like, and then this, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, just uh, it's very important that uh, such kind of uh, software tools we are using. And the last, well, the last line is uh, mostly for game developers. So also, we are using the same platforms which are uh, basically for developing uh, games. Uh, but the first ones are uh, developing exactly virtual reality, so it is, provides us with uh, visual things, uh, with hardware things, and uh, they are open uh, if you want to improve with uh, some additional libraries uh, to provide some additional functionality for uh, some new, uh, new devices. Uh, about augmented reality, maybe, yes, uh, this goes uh, everywhere and uh, we have a lot of examples and uh, I had one year for such a project uh, where we tried to make uh, three-dimensional augmented reality outdoors. So if we imagine, here we see some examples which are already uh, available in, in, in entertainment, so who have played uh, Kinect or used, uh, used Sony PlayStation Move. Very interesting games for, for children, and you can throw your puppets somewhere on the, in the middle of your room. <coughs> or uh, very good, uh, very good applications in tourism where you can use your tablet or uh, smartphone. Uh, Go on this uh, baggy, turn around, and you see all mountains. How high are they? What is the name of these mountains? So you see real mountains through video camera and aug augmented with some additional information. So it's very easy for traveling. Or you go to other, you go to some city, and you need to find some uh, free uh, hotel. You haven't booked it, and also you turn around and your phone which is through video camera shows uh, which is the closest room, which direction is there three rooms and the uh, cheapest one. So this is augmented reality but uh, uh, I want you to catch the difference. What I try to achieve, so this is mostly two-dimensional information which is augmented on a real, uh, real environment. So two-dimensional means text, some photos, directions, but uh, my goal was to get outdoors three-dimensional objects, so to make not a text or an image on top of the real world, but to make a 3D object which you walk, can walk around. There will be some uh, some images. For example, yes, it's a landscape of Latvia, I don't remember which month, some maybe December, so very, very dark, but this is my outdoor test uh, to place outside, so real uh, camera, and to place outside uh, 
3D building. So this uh, project was for the city, like uh, <coughs> called uh, City 3D R, City 3D Augmented Reality. So it's for architectures, uh, city planners. If you want to visualize things not only at computer, but you, if you plan to build some building, you can go outside, take a uh, head-mounted display, or use your tablet and uh, estimate how this building will look in uh, real life. So, and you can come closer, you can uh, go around. Of course, it uh, basically works on a GPS signal, so it's like more for landscape. You can't go inside building because well, then you need additional uh, instruments uh, to make this uh, very high preci precision. Uh, but uh, this was uh, like a 3D augmented reality in outdoors and now there are some already such solutions but they are static, you can't move around you just can place this object and look on it and uh, do nothing so uh, here the main goal was that you can walk around see from different uh, different angles so you see it here, go on the bridge, you see in front of the building so this is like a And of course, uh, different, uh, different also. Uh, I will not go in details in this criteria, but for us it was very important to uh, get this uh, three-dimensional data on top of the on top of the uh, <coughs> uh, real world. So this was quite challenging, and still we don't have very high precision. And, uh, there are a lot of uh, lot of things to do. Also, from the point of view of good these objects are rendered, how good they are uh, displayed and uh, performance issues also must be considered. Uh, and uh, when you do such things in uh, different ways, as I mentioned, uh, the stable uh, tablet computer it's somehow very easy because everything is integrated in one thing. There is video camera, there is uh, all uh, motion sensors and things like that. So it's very easy for that, uh, but higher precision and more immerse, immersive uh, uh, level you can get if you wear goggles. So there are, in this <coughs> second line you can see the goggles we are using from the United States, Wuzix, uh, Wuzix goggles, but this is more uh, heavy set, you need to wear a backpack and uh, put computer and then you can go out. So, but if it's close, you don't need to hold your tablet PC, you just wear the uh, head mounted display, you see everything, and you see this virtual object, so it is uh, more natural, more natural uh, to get uh, with, uh, with uh, such devices, so you just need also this uh, 6 degrees of freedom, sensors, uh, accelerators, and uh, so or manipulations to change color of the building or material of the building. Uh, you can use uh, this glove or some uh, motion capture sensing uh, devices. So this was like more for uh, for architectures, for, for city planners, for designers, and can be used. Uh, this idea is also a similar idea we try to bring to tourism uh, for uh, ancient sites, to visualize ancient sites, for travelers which are traveling and want to, want to see. Uh, yes, I'm coming back, but uh, yes, maybe this is, will be it's too specific, but just uh, I, I try to be simple. About the simulation model, I mentioned that there are, what is, <coughs> what is simulation model? If this is uh, even not a dynamic model, it's more like a, a static, but uh, if these device sets are uh, more than uh, several thousands, then this model helps. Uh, we just show how, what type of um, environment we want to develop, how much money do we have, uh, what uh, portability we will use, whether it will be used indoors or outdoors for factories, for tourism, uh, for, for entertainment. So uh, it's very hard to choose such devices. So there is a list of devices and. Uh, by specifying different parameters in easy, understandable way, we can just get a graph which are most uh, suitable, suitable uh, devices.
sizes. <coughs> so, yes, uh, based, we like to use also battery nets. If you maybe know flowcharts, so battery nets is something similar, but uh, with uh, dynamic char uh, characteristic, you can uh, see how this actual flowchart uh, works in a different. Uh, you can realize different parallel processes to analyze it, and it's also very good for game scenarios. Before you're developing something, you can describe them using these uh, uh, battery networks, uh, which are uh, very good, and you can make very complicated things also with uh, colored battery nets. So <coughs> this one of the things uh, I'm using, not very complicated, but uh, it uh, somehow helps <coughs> uh, for uh, describing uh, different different things uh, for uh, for uh, logistics, it is uh, uh, project. Uh, we have yeah, two projects related to logistics. It's also other thing if you, is to visualize things outdoor. If you just go outdoor and uh, place three D objects, it's uh, and this is the other one which is indoor. So indoors is also. Maybe you have, I can't demonstrate now, but uh, uh, some old school augmented reality where, where you place different markers, black and white, or you can make marker for, for wrong some book, but you need some markers to be placed. For example, uh, if you're planning your, there's such application, if you're planning, for example, your flat, your room, where to place some furniture, just place markers, take your tablet and you see how it looks in real life. Very easy. You don't need to move real uh, real furniture, but you place these markers and uh, you can see how your uh, room is, uh, is looking. Uh, so, but here our goal was uh, to create a similar environment, but without markers. So. And it's very complicated to recognize the room, the borders of room, in, uh, and to get 3D model of room without uh, special, <coughs> special things. Uh, so, and uh, yes, one way how to use this is in logistics, like uh, logistics uh, navigation in a warehouse, and visualizing things. Uh, for example, there are a lot of boxes with some codes. The same, for example, furniture. So. Uh, this uh, worker in a warehouse can find on his goggles are shown arrows like we do navigation in on the street so this navigation warehouse and uh, he can find appropriate this uh, device or box so, uh, items and the next thing he can uh, get uh, 3d 3d model of this of this item so there are also uh, radio frequency identification technologies, RFID uh, technologies are used for location and for uh, correct object uh, recognition. So RFID is, you know, barcode in the shop, so today also RFID tags are used. Uh, if you, it's, a, it's not a direct contact scanners when you can get a price of some uh, uh, some item uh, without uh, scanning it, but from the bigger distance. So it's also used for positions <coughs> and things like that in, in uh, a closer closer distances and uh, indoors. Uh, long to, uh, here is one example uh, about uh, this project in relation in uh, medicine. Uh, it's a like training environment, and again, to get more uh, entertaining and more immersive this uh, training uh, materials, it was for University of Agriculture, for, for uh, Faculty of Veterinary, veterinary. and uh, they, uh, yes, the story is, uh, I was afraid from all these uh, medical things, for me they seemed too complicated and uh, too expensive, this equipment, but uh, I agree to try. That's how we feel now. <laughs> yes, and uh, this is like a prototype. It still doesn't work as we wish, but uh, we're using Microsoft Kinect, which are others using for gaming. So Kinect is very, also very paper in, in a research area for doing experiments. So the basic idea was, as they have uh, real exponents uh, of bones, uh, 
uh, which uh, keep in formalin and it's not good for your health and there are not so many and uh, so it would be nice uh, instead of this uh, uh, not healthy items uh, which students can check, uh, yes, this bone looks this and uh, that, or seeing uh, pictures uh, on, 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 uh, in a box or some also internet have very good materials about this parts of the body, but here it was to make more interactive. And the idea is that uh, students, uh, student take uh, take some. Uh, uh, bone or part of uh, some animal it was just for veterinary not the, the exactly anatomy of human bones but uh, and to see also wearing goggles to see this uh, real uh, real part or all, or all dog skeleton you can see uh, skeleton in different layers or blood or, or veins, <coughs> nerves uh, bones, organs, muscles in different layers, you can walk around and see how it looks, you can uh, uh, touch and, and see, so, uh, and, uh, yes, this is, uh, this is somehow good, and today, also in your uh, fab lab, I, I'm not sure, we have also this 3D printer, not so good as yours, but we have, and uh, you can print such items also, which you can augment, it is, uh, with some, uh, uh, 3D objects and uh, get uh, get more uh, more realistic and it's available for all students, not only in, in some special uh, special place. So this is, uh, but there are also a lot of challenges. You can take this bone, place against these markers, and it's very easy to achieve. But you, if you don't stick special these markers, but uh, just take bone with nothing and see see some blood is running or, or, or things like that so it's uh, it's what we try to do and these are small things but uh, they are uh, making uh, more and more the solutions uh, technically attractive and uh, more uh, more realistic <coughs> yeah but uh, when i had in conference uh, this presentation and also in smaller seminars this presentation that People usually don't like <laughs> if you see blood and if you see, of course if you show for anatomy or, or veterinary students they have no problems for medicine students but other students uh, uh, now I have one of this uh, I'm supervisor for for one uh, bachelor thesis and the student is working also on this and so he got also human a human body so it here uh, no no he is not. Um, working uh, through the through internet with him, but he uh, uh, quite good results and uh, his uh, presentation on defense will be, <laughs> I think, very interesting. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, you can see his body, but it's a uh, virtual body on, on the screen, also the same idea as here with, uh, with these uh, animals in different layers, you can see. Uh, show here is my thought and you can really see this card on my muscles and uh, did he use his own body as a model uh, no you see you you don't see me on the presentation on this video screen you see right. just uh, uh, there has been even uh, such uh, but that is still uh, don't work so good that you uh, wear a special dress projector is on your body and then you also can uh, show your uh, so this is even uh, uh, more like <laughs> entertaining. <coughs> yes, for social students, this is a slide. A little bit. Uh, so, for, for, for well, we work together with um, psychology students, but uh, just a little bit. Uh, I thought I know everything, but it is not so. <laughs> uh, so, about this. Uh, Recognition of the human, uh, recognition of character, recognition of uh, perception type. We know that we're using a lot of these uh, uh, surveys to get to, to know what is our perception type or what is our uh, uh, socionic type. So, and uh, so it is somehow we need. And I use here. Uh, other researchers model called temper mode uh, 
uh, which is like a game. You don't uh, feel survey with standard questions, but you watch some visual information. It's agent-based simulation model. And uh, at the end, just two, three simple questions, and you get uh, uh, <coughs> This, uh, this uh, model tells you what is your, uh, what is your perception type and uh, what is your temperament type. So the results were quite good. Uh, and uh, what I did <coughs> try to start to do is uh, to do this uh, even more entertaining and uh, to do this model in three dimensions. So today is very big. Um, thing which is still working also on this thing is working in, 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 in Germany and this is quite new thing is uh, to visualize uh, uh, results or data of simulation model so because simulation models usually gives data which is not uh, understandable for a uh, normal person for example if in our city uh, we have river Kaui, and uh, we want to make model to measure flood possibility in spring. We had uh, some springs, very much water in the river, and we want to predict it with <coughs> simulation model. We can develop simulation model, but uh, if we want to show the mayor of the city the simulation model, he will not get anything of this data. There will be some uh, flowcharts, uh, but uh, the other thing is uh, that we bring the simulation model data together with uh, virtual reality <coughs> and can show the mayor of the city a real river in 3D and what will happen if snow will be so much the temperature in the February will uh, so much degree so we can model and show that this year possibility in a very easy understandable way so and uh, this thing is done in in, in uh, many areas also, I cannot work in this project, but uh, my colleagues are working for uh, a project in uh, <coughs> Croatia for modeling parks. Also, where to place, not just build a park and then watch what will happen, but uh, to model where is better to place a uh, child ground, to parking lot, and, and uh, things like that, and uh, depending on how many tourists, uh, city visitors are coming there to, to plan correctly, uh, experiment virtually before building, uh, building uh, really this uh, and also you can save a lot of money and avoid some, uh, some uh, accidents in the future. So yes, and there are also some examples also about these battery, battery nets. You can show battery nets like this, as you, as you said. Uh, or this is very simple uh, logic how operates how lift uh, elevator is operating so or you can show make a model bring this logic to this uh, virtual reality environment and show real lift how it's working and uh, this let's say visualize this uh, uh, logics of uh, some uh, mathematical or, 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 or simulation model notations Yes, and uh, I think this is last one thing, not very easy to see, I think so. It's easier on my computer, but it is the uh, last project where we work in the... It's uh, not still uh, to... Uh, it's not still implemented, but we are starting uh, together uh, with uh, tourism specialists from Italy. Italy, Salento, Salento University, and uh, yes, what we try to make is uh, the things I told previously. Somehow, all of these uh, uh, technologies we have developed before, we are using in, in uh, this uh, this project uh, to make. Uh, there was an example about this. Uh, ancient sites, so this is ancient site visualization outdoors in real life, but it's not only that you go and see something but there is also this uh, gamification so you are like playing game outdoors, so you have some scenarios, missions quizzes, uh, you collect artifacts and um, you're doing some mission 
Uh, it's uh, something like uh, geocaching. Do you know geocaching? I think so. Is that the one that they you hide something? In yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's very crazy, popular <laughs> yeah, all yeah. over the world. I, can, uh, I have done this geocaching quite a lot, but uh, I haven't tried actually in Georgia. It would be interesting to check how many uh, items are hidden here, but it, it is. But it's very popular and it attracts tourists and uh, tourists will not go to some, uh, just uh, some, uh, to look on some old stone where uh, ancient peoples many centuries ago were praying or doing some things like that. But if this, if you make some attraction with visualization and some gaming uh, scenario, because this geocaching is also, it's very educational. Uh, you got a lot of information about uh, specific places and uh, it's active and you are not just sitting at home at the computer but you are moving <coughs> all around so uh, but it's like bringing this uh, geocaching thing to the next level where you because it's also some kind of game you have hidden real items you can see it. you can give mission to these items for example you place some geocoin and with the mission I want is that this geocoin goes to Antarctica and then people are trying to move in this from country to country so it's quite, uh, there is a story you can uh, know a lot of information about this, each of these places uh, so some, some kind of uh, this logic uh, about uh, together with virtual augmented reality and uh, some visual effects about uh, these uh, real places and this is used technology. So one uh, year I was in a conference in Copenhagen, and they are doing similar things, but they are doing this with uh, real actors. So they had one project where they made actors as uh, ancient people in outdoors in some uh, woods or uh, ships uh, port, and uh, they were like in But it's very expensive. <laughs> you need actors, you need ways, and you need special dress. But to get this, like. Uh, ancient uh, times uh, how, how it was done so you can do it once but uh, it's not like very very uh, sustainable <coughs> what kind of hardware does this use? Uh, is it just the tablet or you need something like glasses or something? Uh, uh, is this actually will use uh, uh, the idea is also to use uh, cardboard or, or, or uh, we use the raw is dive there is you use like your smartphone, but there's such solution. Um, uh, there are a lot of free applications already, and if you have a 3D printer, you can print out the case. Uh, you place smartphone in, in front of your eyes. You see real world, and you see virtual objects. And uh, you know probably Oculus Rift. It's very very famous. So this is the principle of Oculus Rift only. And it's very cheap. Everyone has a smartphone, and then uh, you can get uh, just uh, for some five, ten dollars this case with special lenses uh, to uh, to get uh, to get this virtual environment. So the main goal is also to make this uh, uh, very very <coughs> available for for many people because you, not not anyone can buy Oculus Rift or, or some augmented reality glasses. <coughs> Expensive and this good that this is everywhere if you have this thing. And uh, yes, so well, one way is uh, to, to use uh, just uh, smartphones, mobile application with uh, augmented uh, reality. Of course, with one camera it's not so easy to provide stereoscopics, but it works also quite, uh, quite good because. Uh, However, some phones already have two cameras to get a stereoscopic uh, and depth camera to scan the environment, so there are possibilities. So, for, for this project, like, not some very, very specific, uh, specific hardware. We need to use what is already done, and you can do a lot of uh, with these sensors and cameras and uh, uh, performance also is very good for 3D, 3D graphics and uh, light, no wires, wireless. Okay, so now your time, ask questions. <laughs> I think I uh, So you are, you are the. Uh, yes, I, I'm moving to next slide. The next slide is. <laughs> we should, we should okay. give you.
So this, the last slide, is what you're working on as your postdoc research here? Uh, yes, yes. This is, I'm preparing a proposal, but actually it's like making, it's for serious project in, in Horizon 2020 for European Commission. And uh, so from, to make this, it's actually as making dissertation. The amount is very big and if you want to make really good, then it's, uh, it takes a lot of a lot of time, but I did my dissertation uh, four years ago, so I have <laughs> rested a little bit. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks a lot for the interesting talk. Uh, I have a couple of questions. It's actually one question. Um, Concerning the augmented, augmented reality, when one navigates in the outdoor reality, then the guidance comes from sort of GPS satellites. What about navigating indoors? Where is the, the guidance from? Mm -hmm. uh, indoors, uh, RFID, RFID, radio frequency identification, which is used for uh, tagging uh, items for distance, but there are solutions also for close distance where you can get uh, a precise uh, position. Uh, such solutions are not many and uh, they are really expensive. We don't have such a laboratory, but uh, there is uh, such a possibility for indoor indoor traction. Or otherwise you place these markers and uh, calculate. So you the markers and guidance. Yes, right. yes, but, uh, but in, in this case, uh, it's like a theoretical more model, but this is based on uh, radio uh, RFID technologies uh, or globalization. Yeah. Um, so why did you choose this country? Because uh, this is my problem, uh, mainly, because um, piracy. Uh, is uh, like this kind of development under threat uh, in a place such as this where piracy is really high, like 97% uh, uh, software piracy. Okay, software piracy. Yeah. Is, is okay. this kind of thing under threat from, that, uh, from piracy or not? Actually, actually no, I, I can't, nothing. You uh, can't. If if it some if it if it will work, it's meant for open public. Oh. It's 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 a project. It's not to earn some not money. Uh, however, there can be some business models under also this project. Uh, maybe similar as it is with uh, this geocaching project, which is since uh, GPS went to public, uh, so this is very old. And they also, they sell these coins, which are uh, this uh, geotax, travel tax, and different things, and inventing, and uh, people are buying all over the world, so this is how they get it. But software, it's like social, social based. Uh, they don't uh, hide something, they just, uh, they have portal, internet, and uh, other things is for human reason. If there is a very big involvement uh, from public, this system is open for everyone, and everyone likes it and using this, and of course, and you just need uh, at least uh, you know, one, uh, one cent from <laughs> yeah. uh, each people on the world, yes. How did, why did you choose Georgia then, uh, for your postdoc research? Uh, for my, uh, this way I choose. Yeah. This was, uh, uh, naturally it started, uh, uh, it was not because uh, of Georgia, I can say. However, uh, before Ilya University, I, I was also in the uh, University of Georgia last year for one month, and uh, they are doing a lot of things in tourism and uh, have developed mobile applications for traveling and seeing pictures, and uh, so they were really interested in this. But in our university, there is very good tourism program, it's the best program in the Latvia. And so, working together with these colleagues, they have made a big project regarding to this uh, uh, 
uh, ancient sites, so I got ideas that we can uh, match together, make some interdisciplinary approach, and uh, make good proposal for, for project work. And uh, that's yes, it's already taken some maybe okay. not year, but. I have a couple of questions if you allow me. So first, uh, you cooperate here while staying here with some of our computer people? Yes, yes, with, uh, with uh, Professor Oh, I forgot her name. But, uh, okay. You are uh, doing a... Yes, uh, this is... Uh, I'm making... Yes, 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 yes. And, uh, I, I, I want to get the... Cooperation with him. He's good in mathematics. Right. And I have, uh, I, have, I wouldn't say problems, but there is a lot of things uh, which should be solved mathematically. Yeah. There are machine machine learning and, and uh, place recognition, and there are a lot of calculations. And I hope uh, he will help me in some of uh, in some of these things. And are you also in touch with a game lab people? Yes, yes, yes. So you uh, game, game lab is... They're working most on uh, games for entertainment, but it's also very, very good, and uh, it's like technologies, and this guy is very, very interested, and uh, I would say fanatic. Uh, I was so fanatic uh, only in secondary school. I also was programming games, and you can spend all the time I, w I wish I had the same <laughs> okay. again. Uh, I, I have one a specific question. Uh, this is a technologies, what you are speaking about, which are sold. So, which are like a certain, I don't know. Uh, you are developing technologies and then you are selling these technologies. So, I don't know your rules. And my question is, uh, so, but it is also a development of science, of computer science, right? And uh, sometimes you like publish in scientific mm -hmm. journals your achievements. Uh, how it somehow what what you uh, like prefer to uh, get a patent a patent for, mm -hmm. and what you prefer to uh, publish, and mm -hmm. how this. Uh, potential conflicts are resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more like applied sciences. So we are working on uh, like real usable prototypes and all these ideas, they are like uh, creative. They are, no, no, they, are, they are not such ideas developed. And uh, so this, and it's, I have never, None of these things have been like sold, and and, and I'm still not selling. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but no, selling no, I, I don't mean your personal, mm -hmm. but maybe your university. But uh, or yes, your yes, yes. But uh, these are mostly mostly project work, uh, works which are for uh, applied sciences. So they are bring really not some uh, theoretical, not so much theoretical things. However, we have done also some achievements in uh, th th this area but uh, it's more to, to, to realistic use and usually in, uh, in, in conferences uh, conferences and uh, so how the impact of your research is achieved I mean influence of your research that you are mentioning in science uh, impact uh, impact is uh, I think it's uh, they said it's uh, the, we can talk about uh, verification, validation of results, and, and uh, so for me, uh, this validation is when I go once or twice a year to international conference, which is exactly to these technologies. Yeah. And uh, when I have these discussions with uh, people who are working directly in these sciences, and uh, if uh, if uh, their uh, they recognize and say that it is good. Then, <laughs> then okay, I, you I, have I, a I, sort, sort yes, of kind I, of peer review. Yes, 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 yes. This is uh, how uh, I have yeah, several publications. Uh, I make also this uh, like um, statistical uh, evaluation and things yeah. and then measuring uh, to prove that this uh, 
So, okay, so we will save money, so we will save time, and uh, we will improve quality of uh, study process. Uh, but for me, it is uh, like more formal and boring part. But, uh, uh, but this is uh, what but, I, but this is what I, are doing this. But uh, yes, but this is what science needs, and uh, of course, I just can't. Uh, However, I like this, uh, like artists, they just uh, create and they don't need uh, to validate their painting. However, they also make these uh, uh, things and uh, when people come well, and... Well, they need that their paintings either are sold or not. Yes, yes, and <laughs> exactly, and for me it's uh, like evaluation with uh, other more experienced uh, professors, because I'm you know, like a new scientist and um, I don't say this is very unique and new things, but uh, this is how, how, how I do it. More questions? I have one. So how developed is this stuff in Latvia? Um, are, are some companies giving some kind of... No, no. no. Even rich companies, we have... Uh, in Latvia, it's, uh, we, we actually, our university first started these things. I know some uh, uh, things are uh, now developing also in Estonia. <coughs> they have uh, developed for dentists, for uh, some uh, virtual reality, but mostly it's very popular in, in Germany, in Norway, for uh, oil platforms, so for rich companies, in Germany it's m mostly for car industry, BMW and all are using virtual reality to model uh, car I interior, exterior and visualize things and uh, make these uh, simulations, but uh, not in Latvia. Uh, the first, uh, first, uh, this uh, environment uh, I could uh, talk in our city. There's very big. It's the biggest uh, fiberglass uh, factory. Fiberglass company producing. You now they build a factory also in United Kingdom and also in United States. So this is very good for our city. And uh, the job there is very like. Uh, uh, extreme and, and not good for your health and people are changing you need to uh, again to teach them how to work with these oiling machines and things like that and we wanted they have a special like uh, professional who teaches them and we offer it uh, we could uh, make you such environment virtual reality where you can uh, teach these uh, operators but even they were not uh, able <laughs> to pay for, for this sometimes yes sometimes it's uh, expensive and even if you speak about uh, not some science but industrially available already you know how to develop you just you need to develop i have a strange question so whether these uh, tools of the virtual reality are anywhere used for like a nature history museum installations yes in uh, in, uh, uh, in exhibitions they're right. used in exhibitions right. but Yes, you can... Uh, More like a landscape groups and so yeah. so it's a mixture of mm -hmm. uh, like stuffed individuals and paintings uh, mm -hmm. and... Uh, yes, and yes, just, uh, just for visualization you mean, for example, people can uh, come, see, uh, touch, turn around, look inside, uh, yes, it's, 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 it's done. No, not only in... Uh, but also in other different museums, uh, it's, it's, Where, it's, for it's, it's, it's appearing uh, in, uh, I know some museums are using in Latvia, but okay. there are, again, there are different levels. One thing is you can just uh, use and see some uh, multiple touch screen, right. so th this is quite paper. Mm -hmm. and no, but if you have like a room, you know, with some animals mm -hmm. and group, I don't know, like... Yes, yes. And some animals you don't have there and you <laughs> make them virtual? Yeah, it is possible, but I, I can't be in, in uh, such a museum. I have been uh, such solutions which are mostly for, for the training of museums, but if you can place in the room a train, you can go <laughs> inside this train and uh, teach how to operate this uh, train. Uh, so uh, there is no problem to put animals. If there is such an idea, you can do also in your projects. So it's also big. And there is aim just to, to what, what is reason to get more uh, 
people to this uh, place or for uh, doing some uh, experiments or you no know, it's like a, for instance you want to present something you want mm -hmm. to present a lot ancient landscape mm -hmm. as animals and so forth. Yes, yes, okay. and you have something which you can mm -hmm. just take you have some uh, individuals uh, mm -hmm. museum individuals some animals or yes, some plants and so and so but you don't have like a dinosaur or something. Mm -hmm. And you can I, I'm, I'm sure I can find such museums that such uh, are already working. I know that uh, one uh, other bachelor work uh, which I'm supervising is uh, uh, making uh, one street of our city where you also walk and you can see these uh, buildings in different centuries, century back, century back. Okay. It's cooperation with uh, our city museum. But you can see how this building look, uh, or the street, how it look uh, some time ago. And it's it's not just a, like a picture, but it's a street in model buildings, other colors, other buildings, no buildings. Uh, Thank you very much.